Natasha kann push. On the morning of March 2nd, 1998, 10-year-old Natasha Kampusch left her family's home in Vienna to go to school when she failed to arrive at class or return home. She would not be seen again until eight years later. Natasha Kampusch had just returned from a vacation in Hungary when she disappeared. It was later found out that the young girl carried her passport everywhere she went, so the police extended the search abroad. A 12-year-old witness notified the authorities he had seen Natasha being dragged into a white minivan by two men, and a massive search ensued. The police examined 775 vans, including that of her actual kidnapper, Wolfgang Priklopel. When he was questioned, the captor stated that he was at home by himself the morning of the kidnapping. He explained that he used the minivan for construction work for transporting rubble. The police believed him and let him go. Kampusch was held captive underneath Priklopil's garage in a small soundproof cellar with no windows for eight years. During the first six months, she was not allowed to leave the chamber, but she was seen in the garden by unsuspecting neighbors years later. Her captor even took her on a skiing trip on one occasion and would make her do schoolwork. Kampusch did try to escape several times and continuously made noise, throwing objects around the house to alert neighbors, but it was all in vain. On August 23, 2006, Kampusch was vacuuming the home when Priklopil went outside to take a call. Natasha seized the opportunity and ran away. She ran 220 yards through the quiet neighborhood asking for help, but no one paid her any attention. She then knocked on the window of an elderly neighbor and screamed, quote, I am Natasha Kampusch. That day, the now 18-year-old woman was taken to the police and officially identified by a scar on her body. Subsequent DNA tests confirmed her identity, and she was reunited with her family. Although Natasha was in good health, she had only gained seven pounds since her disappearance eight years earlier. And before justice could be served, Priklopil took his own life. In a documentary about her life, the kind-hearted woman sympathized with her captor, saying, quote, I feel more and more sorry for him. He's a poor soul. Still, she also referred to her captor and his actions as criminal. After her escape, Natasha Kampusch released a book about her terrible ordeal called 3096 Days. It was later adapted as a feature film. Carlina White Carlina White was only a newborn when she was kidnapped from a New York hospital. It was the first known infant abduction in the state. On August 4th, 1984, Joy White and Carl Tyson brought their 19-day-old child, Carlina, into the emergency room of the Harlem Hospital Center in Manhattan to be treated for a fever. The parents were worried after being told that their child had swallowed fluid during the delivery and was now battling an infection. They were then comforted by a woman in white nurse garb. This individual wasn't an employee and she'd already been seen roaming around the hospital for three weeks. Between 2.30 a.m. and 3.55 a.m. the following day, the baby disappeared. Someone had ripped the IV line that was administering her medication and abducted her. The fake nurse immediately became the prime suspect, but the video surveillance system was not working. The only way to know what the woman in white looked like was the description given by Carlina's parents. Eighteen years later, when Connecticut Ray's Nadra Nance became pregnant in 2005, she asked her mother, Anugeta Petway, for a birth certificate in order to get health insurance. When Nadra attempted to use the certificate her mother gave her at the insurance company, officials told her that the document had been forged. Nance then confronted her mother, who broke down and confessed that she was not her biological mother and that a drug addict had abandoned her as a newborn. But Nadra wasn't entirely convinced, and in 2011, the 23-year-old logged into the website at the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children and made a gruesome discovery. She saw the photo of an abducted infant who looked just like her and her daughter, Samani. 
Nedra immediately contacted the center's hotline, and DNA profiling confirmed she was the missing girl. Carlina White then reunited with her birth family, who never lost hope that their child would return one day. The abductor was eventually arrested. She confessed in the trial that she had abducted Carlina because she had had several miscarriages. By February of 2012, she pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 12 years in prison. The case became one of the longest known abduction cases in the U.S. in which the victims were reunited with their families. Mao Yin On October 17, 1988, two-year-old Mao Yin was walking home with his father in the Chinese city of Xi'an when the boy became thirsty. The two of them went into a hotel to cool down, but in a matter of seconds, the boy was gone. Mao Yin's mother, Li Jingxi, quit her job to continue searching for her son and handed out over 100,000 flyers by herself in over 10 provinces around China. Throughout the decades, she appeared on several television shows appealing for help, but after following 300 leads, no match was found. In 2007, Mrs. Lee became a volunteer in Baby Come Back Home, an organization that helps parents look for missing children. She helped to reunite 29 families with their missing relatives. By April of 2020, the Sichuan Province Police received a tip about a family who had illegally adopted a baby years earlier, and they believed it could be Mao Yin. After a DNA test on 34-year-old Gu Ningning, the results came back positive. Mrs. Lee was informed about her son's reappearance on May 10th, 2020, China's Mother's Day. His father, Mao Zhengzheng, and Li Jingxi were reunited with their son only days after 32 years. The event was captured on video and became viral. The investigation into the 1988 disappearance is still ongoing. According to the police, the kid had been sold to a childless couple, but no further information has been revealed. Camille Mobley On July 10, 1998, 16-year-old Shannara Mobley gave birth to her first child, Camilla, in a hospital in Florida. Eight hours after delivery, the newborn disappeared. Hospital officials declared that Camilla was abducted by a woman impersonating a nurse. The woman had gone into the room, talked to Shannara, and then walked out with the child in her arms. Employees initially believed that the woman was a member of the family. For months, Shannara appeared on television pleading for the return of her daughter. It was later discovered that a woman named Gloria Williams had traveled from her South Carolina home to a Florida hospital after suffering a traumatizing miscarriage and took Camilla in her purse. Camilla, renamed Alexis Manigo, lived in South Carolina for years with Williams, her husband, and other kids. When Alexis turned 16, she wanted to get a summer job and questioned her mother about a social security card or a valid birth certificate. The family avoided the topic for almost two years. But in January of 2017, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children received an anonymous tip about Camilla, and DNA tests proved that Alexis was the missing child. Gloria Williams was arrested in her home and extradited to Florida, where she was charged with kidnapping. A year later, she pled guilty and admitted she acted alone in 1998. Since the ordeal, Demia has had a strained relationship with her birth mother, but is close with her biological father and grandmother. She's also been vocal in her support of her adoptive mother, whom she still calls mom. JC Dugard. In 1991, Carl Proben witnessed his stepdaughter JC being kidnapped as she waited at a bus stop near the California home. Proben chased the kidnappers on his mountain bike, but couldn't catch up to them. A nationwide search immediately began after JC's disappearance, but there were no reliable leads. For 18 years, JC was kept in a hidden compound in Philip and Nancy Garrido's backyard. During this time, Dugard gave birth to two daughters while still a girl herself. 
In August of 2009, Philip Garrido visited the UC Berkeley campus, accompanied by two little girls. The unusual behavior between the three sparked an investigation, and Philip was asked by a parole officer to bring the children into a police station in Concord. Garrido brought JC and the two girls into the police station on August 26th. He was then sentenced to 431 years to life in prison, while his wife Nancy was sentenced to 36 years to life. Since her release, J.C. Dugard has become a beacon of strength and resilience. In 2011, she published her story in the book A Stolen Life, a memoir. She's perhaps the most famous case of a child abductee returning home as an adult. Thank you for watching my video. Please remember to subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels and hit the bell icon to be notified of all our newest content.